the National Defence Industrial Association, better known as NDIA. Uh, he's got over 30 years experience with technology, business management and strategy, including defence acquisition, international information technology, consulting, aerospace, nuclear power and education. His experience in defence work began upon entering the US Air Force in 1976, where he served four years as an astronautical engineer responsible for the integration of experimental payloads with the uh, Minuteman, Minuteman 1 ballistic missile. Okay. We're not going to argue with that, are we? Okay. So, uh, in this session, he's going to take a, a look at the outcome-driven government and the move towards agility in architecture. So, please give a big, warm, open group welcome to Dave Cheesley. Thank you, Alan. There's, there. There's a clicker up there. So, uh, Alan, thank you for uh, inviting us to participate in this event today. It's a, it's a real honor and a pleasure to be here. And the comment that I'm obliged to make to you uh, in this position on the agenda is that I stand between you and lunch. And I'm going to try to work through my 45 slides in a, in a relatively quick manner, but uh, I, I hope you had a, a, a lot of nourishment during the break. Uh, actually, I'm going to try to give you an overview of what, what we're talking about here. And I loved the presentation that Joanne just gave, because change is what we're all about. We all <coughs> experience change, and change is exactly what's happening in government and industry today, where enterprise architecture is concerned. Hence, outcome-driven government was really a look at how do we make enterprise architecture more aligned with outcomes in government and less aligned with bureaucracy and hierarchy and documents and that sort of thing, which frankly in today's environment in government don't sell. Uh, funding is not there for large enterprise architecture organizations and so EA tends to suffer a bit. So we're going to address that a little bit in today's presentation. And I encourage you to interact, ask questions, make comments. Um, please don't throw food, but other than that, please interact with me as we go along. So where are we in IT? Well, IT is always being transformed. You know, we uh, lived through the period of Moore's Law where every 18, 20 months or so, uh, capabilities for processors and storage, et cetera, were doubling and changing. We're now in a period, though, where that kind of capability is driving how we do things. So it's not just putting um, as much computing power in your pocket as you used to have on your desktop. It's about changing the way we do things. So what, in the con that context, does enter enterprise architecture look like? So we began to ask this question not out of examination of EA per se, but over a course of several years looking at agile software development in government. And we began then to look at capability releases, you know, faster cycle times, and ask the question, what does this do to EA? And we came at this from the perspective of seven years having run the Defense Department's Enterprise Architecture Conference. And I'm some of you, most of you, probably familiar with DODAF. It's a little intimidating for me uh, as an observer of all this to be up here talking to the doers of all this, enterprise architects and technologists. But I think the observations are you know, that we have come from a point where with DODAF, for example, uh, you could have a big repository with a lot of documents and a lot of views and take a lot of time and have big architecture organizations to a point where none of that is viable anymore. So where is government in this whole digital transformation? Well, they lag commercial and they lag it by quite a bit. I'm probably not telling you anything you, you haven't already considered or realized, but government today is attempting to transform. So uh, we have recently done an event uh, with OMB and a number of federal agencies on the Federal Information Technology Acquisition Reform Act 
We have relationships with the U.S. Digital Service and 18F. Uh, Digital Playbook and TechFire came out of these organizations. This is an attempt by this current administration to bring government IT into the modern world. That's a big, big ask. And that involves a lot of change and a lot of change management. Section 901 of the current uh, NDAA, does anybody not know what NDAA is? The National Defense Authorization Act. There's a section in there that requires the Defense Department to combine their chief information officer function with their deputy chief management officer, bring those together uh, into an undersecretary of uh, information and business process. And the legislation makes that the number three position in the department, giving it precedence above the undersecretary of defense for acquisition technology and logistics. That organization, as you know, being the chief acquirer of all things defense. This is, this is unprecedented kind of change and we have yet to see how that's all going to work out. Digital ecosystem transforms the business landscape. Uh, some of you are sitting out there right now, probably bored with this presentation. You've gone on Amazon, you're trying to look for the next book, or you've gone to Netflix and you're looking for the next movie, right? We have transformed the way we access information and the way we use information. Or th or, uh, I've seen some studies that say in a year or two, there'll be more appliances on the planet than people. We all have multiple appliances. You've got tablets, you've got netbooks, you've got cell phones. You know, so access to information has changed the way we do things in a software-defined everything environment. So software defines everything uh, that we do, and internet enables everything. So now we talk about the internet of everything or the internet of things, everything being connected, everything from my cell phone to my refrigerator the, to a webcam and, uh, in my uh, kid's room. I mean, everything is connected on the internet now. That means that consumers really are defining technological business trends. So it's the consumer no longer um, taking what they're given, but seeing something great out there and going and getting it. And that has a huge impact on business models. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, have any of you ever read the Eric Reese book um, on uh, business models called uh, Lean Startup? Has anybody, anybody read that book? If you haven't read that book, I recommend you pick it up and read it, and read it with an eye towards architecture. Read about entrepreneurship, innovation. You've heard of Clayton Christensen and his innovation models, right? disruptive innovation or, or uh, sort of sustaining innovation. All of this is really about change, which is why Joanne's presentation was so great uh, to be able to listen to. So digital ecosystem changes everything. There's an app for that. Right? That's what we say now. Anytime you want something, there's an app for that. So what is digital transformation? Well, this comes from a presentation that Jason Bloomberg gave to our outcome-driven government group uh, a while back, and it's kind of his take on uh, what digital transformation does. Anybody know who Jason Bloomberg is? I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that you haven't read some of his, his posts in the Forbes, Forbes magazine blog on, you know, is enterprise architecture broken, is it dead? Uh, he, he's been kind of a controversial figure where that goes. But he's got some good ideas, and one of them is that, is that this notion of digital transformation is, uh, is end user pressures driving technology and organizational change. That's the whole notion of we're being driven by consumers now. We're not being driven by suits in executive offices saying, I think this would be a good idea. We're driven by what consumers want to have as the technology rolls out and is presented to them. So that makes enterprises rethink the roles that they play, how they serve citizens in the terms of the government. That's what USDS is all about, uh, citizen-facing services. You're, you're probably uh, maybe even painfully aware of the, uh, the botched rollout of the healthcare.gov. Uh, they brought um, a gentleman from Google in to fix that problem, and he now runs the U.S. Digital Services Group under OMB in the executive office of the president. So the whole focus is how do we serve citizens better? And in doing that, we have to be more agile. So then the question then becomes, looking back down the chain, what does enterprise architecture look like 
in that context. Um, what does the role, what's the role of IT? Uh, how do you build and manage teams? And how do those teams innovate? So IT transformation reshapes business models. Lean startups, new approaches to product development. Do things quick, test it out with the consumer. Make changes as you go. Don't spend years and years developing a product and then launch it only to find out there's no market for it. Right? The, this, the, the process, particularly in a digital environment, of rolling new products out has changed. That's why I recommend that book, Lean Startup. It'll kind of open your eyes to what companies like, like um, Redbox, like uh, Intuit. Anybody use uh, Intuit's tax programs when you do your income tax? I hate to bring that up, but so, so Intuit is, a, is an interesting example of taking these kinds of concepts and they used to roll out their product once a year, right? Tax time came around and they'd, they'd uh, have a big launch of the, this year's tax software. Everybody would buy it in the six months leading up to April 15th and that would be that. They are now into this continuous innovation cycle where they now roll out 500 different changes or products throughout the course of a year, including a, an app where you can take a picture of your W-2 and then online you can have your uh, 1040EZ filled out for you just through using your cell phone and taking a picture of your, your W-2. It's these kinds of changes that, that are impacting us not only from our, our, our experience with them but from uh, an enterprise perspective. And again, so what does enterprise architecture look like in the context of this environment? The web business challenges, really, all businesses. General Motors, Merck, anybody who's doing business today, who you might think of as a large traditional corporation, is challenged by having to offer services to their consumers online. And, and do this in a very an innovative and uh, changed environment. So what is enterprise architecture? I, this slide probably is um, not necessary for a group like this, but it is a conceptual blueprint that defines structure and operation of an enterprise or an organization, aligning business applications, uh, processes, data and information, and technology perspectives, right? Isn't that what we want enterprise architecture to do? is to bring all of that into alignment so we can make good decisions. So what changes in our enterprises today? Business processes, applications, data and information, products and services, technology, everything that enterprise architecture is supposed to align with the goals of the organization changes. Well, what does that mean for EA? It means EA has to be agile. It has to be adaptable, right? it has to be flexible. And the pace of change in this digital environment is accelerating, change, change, change. That's really what the world is all about. So what does architecture look like in a digital context? I don't have the answer to that question. But here's some, some observations. You know, so digital technology begins with the end user touch point, that's your, your iPad, your cell phone, any appliance you have that uses the internet and connects you with information. So it's web and mobile apps. Web and mobile apps include a lot of third party services. So you're touching other organizations as well. And they generally run in the cloud. Architectural considerations, do you use REST or SOAP when you're running uh, cloud apps? But they also connect back to uh, databases, systems of record, uh, and those can be run in the cloud or on-premise. Does all, any of this sound like architectural concepts and, and applications and impacts to you? Because it does to me. So you see people talking about agile software development, DevOps, other things, and they'll say, ah, we don't need documentation, we don't need no stinking architecture. Architecture is absolutely necessary. Too little does what? It invites chaos. Anybody do anything that they want to? How does an enterprise, a business, a government agency move forward along a particular path to achieve a goal if anybody can do anything they want to? That won't work. Too much architecture, too many documents, too many reviews, 
too much uh, uh, database uh, filling out and things like that stifles innovation. So how much architecture is enough? I think personally that that's all contextual. Kind of depends on what kind of business you are, depends on what kind of government agency uh, you run. So no one size fits all approach will work for enterprise architecture. But I believe that frameworks are a, a, an absolute key to tailoring EA. One of the things that we're finding is that instead of architecture departments now, architects are being embedded in the field, in developer organizations. The Capital One, they took their architectural organization, dispersed it across the whole company because they do rapid development of uh, applications for customers and for um, uh, compliance issues, things of that nature. So the architects really have now become developers. So again, the question is not just what does enterprise architecture look like as a thing, but where does it live in an organization? Where are your enterprise architecture experts? Where should they be? And I, and I believe, again, that's all contextual. TOGAF is a global EA standard. Uh, I, it would be remiss of me to uh, come to this event and not mention TOGAF. And one of the things that TOGAF works to do is ensure that everyone speaks the same language. I loved the Dilbert cartoons that Joanne had in her presentation, and I wish I had thought of bringing some animation here to put in my presentation, because what I would have chosen were minions from Despicable Me, who speak a language that nobody can understand, right? Gibberish. Well, sometimes to business leaders, that's what architecture sounds like, right? So we need to have a common language so that architects can work with the leaders of the business to get them to understand the value of architecture. Because what does architecture really do for a business, right? It enables things, but it's not a product. Unless you're an architectural tool company, you can't take it and sell it. So it's kind of like that old commercial, I think it was BASF, that said, we don't make the thing, we make the stuff in the thing better. Remember that? Some of you are maybe not old enough to remember that. Well, that's kind of what architecture is. So how do you convince business leaders who have tight budgets in, in the commercial sector, they have uh, quarterly profit uh, goals and, and reports and things of that nature, in, the, in government, they have budgets that have to be approved on an annual basis. How do you get them to invest in the thing that will make their products better? And you do that through communication. So this notion that we have a common language that everybody can speak and understand is uh, very important. So the questions for enterprise architecture in the digital world. What are appropriate artifacts? How much documentation is enough? I mean, we deal with that same question when we talk about uh, agile software development. I think you have the same question with enterprise architecture. What does architecture contribute to enterprise agility? Businesses will change. How does architecture keep up? Because if architecture can't keep up, it becomes irrelevant, and you don't want to be irrelevant. Uh, enterprise resilience, the b ability to respond to negative change to recover from a cyber penetration, uh, to have a continuity of operations plan that works, uh, to provide data security, uh, privacy, and those sorts of things. Managing the change and the risk and responding to competition. Because while you're out there changing, the competition is out there changing. And so you need to uh, at least stay even, and if not, get ahead of the competition. So what about this agile software? One of the things that I heard, heard said recently about software developed through agile methods is that you're really building terrific working legacy software faster. So agile methods and building software really don't get you to business agility. So how can we plan for the unanticipated? And this is again where EA needs to consider how to be more agile to respond to business changes. 
So EA must enable business agility to have the flexibility in operating models, keeping costs down, having a culture of productivity and innovation, a culture of change, if you will, adaptability, establish business relations with, with new uh, organizations, people who might have been competitors in one age, now are partners in this age. Alignment, aligning uh, the expectations of customers, the expectations of stakeholders, the expectations of management, society at large where um, things like ethics or green might be concerned. How do you balance all those? How do you align all those? Enterprise architecture is a great way to do this. And again, resilience, coping with uh, and recovering from negative change. So I think the enterprise architecture challenges are to demonstrate relevance. If you can't demonstrate relevance, then you can't expect to be included in the business conversations. Avoid the trap of institutionalization. I think this is where DOD went wrong and that DODAF became this big monolithic thing that, that was a, basically a square filling exercise, did not have relevance to uh, system developers, combatant commands. They couldn't understand why this thing over here that they had to pay for didn't really seem to be helping them do their mission. That's where uh, I think uh, we really need to make sure that outcome driven is a part of the enter enterprise architecture uh, lexicon. What's, what is the critical core of enterprise architecture? If you talk to Amazon, uh, they maintain, or Apple for, the, for that matter, they maintain a set of, of core uh, APIs that are, that are inviolate, that, that cannot be altered or changed. If you want to have an app in the Apple App Store, there's certain application programming interfaces you must conform to or you won't be there. Is that a perspective of enterprise architecture? And then we talked about the Capital One example, distributing architecture, the function of architecture across an organization, maybe with some centralized policy control, uh, but making sure that architecture is a part of everything that the organization does. So this is our outcome-driven government or group. Um, we host conversations between government and industry on making enterprise architecture more useful for them, more agile. Uh, we've had 17 federal agencies participating in this group. Uh, just recently, we hosted uh, the first implementation conference on FATERA. Uh, you can see the, the, that uh, event at our website. Uh, we're doing an ODG meeting uh, in conjunction with the 2015 EA East Conference that 1105 Media Group is holding in Washington, D.C. And uh, if you want to know more about ODG, then you can visit our website with that link there at the bottom of the screen. So I want to thank you for participating. Uh, I'm, it's a pleasure, Alan, for me to be here. Hope this was useful for you as a non-architect observer looking at your profession. Uh, I hope you found some value in this. My contact information is there, uh, so please feel free to contact me. Okay, thank you very much. We're just going to have a couple of quick, couple of quick uh, questions, so we, we move on. Um, have, have a seat from there. So, wh what is DoD doing with the enterprise architecture? Are they doing anything at all, or are they just building stuff? So, a couple of years ago, uh, the DoD CIO unfunded all of the work that they were doing in DoDAF. Right. And as a substitute, they've said that their architecture effort is really the joint information environment. Uh, I think that that's probably not an acceptable substitute for the direction they were heading right. uh, with DoDAF. Uh, we've been trying to engage with them on that, but they seem very focused on, on the JIE, and uh, I don't think that really is going to answer all of the enterprise architecture problems that they have. No, no. No, it's unfortunate. So, um, yeah, I, I think most people agree that agility is important um, and lightweight. Uh, agile doesn't mean there's no documentation. It, you know, it goes along with it. But um, I, I think it would be you know, useful. E every government around the planet is using enterprise architecture right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be good to see it back in DOD because we, we need them to do the right things. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you.